first open and they designed these one circles where you got four G's okay and and so like when you ride through that your face does like this you know and I have to tell you standing up here this morning I feel a little bit like that so uh, pray for me uh, and and sometimes you know, like you know something's coming and you prepare for it but yesterday uh, I appreciate everybody that was here for Milton's funeral uh, that was a real blessing the funeral is a blessing, but it kind of ended up, I had to go to Fort Worth to do the interment, and I didn't really know I was going to do that until kind of toward the end, so that takes the day, uh, and got in last night, so I still like I'm feel, you know, like I'm doing like this this morning, and uh, so pray for me, and glad that you're here today. We gather in the name of our Lord Jesus, and when we gather in his name, he's here in the midst of us. I pray for you today that you will experience his presence. The flowers today are given by Ann and Steve and Garrett and Mallory Golding, uh, and they're given in the uh, memory of Amy's parents, Wanda and Cleo Marlowe. And so always thankful for the flowers and the beauty they add to our sanctuary, so I want to do that. The next thing, here's the announcement I need you to hear because there's been con it's been a struggle, but we were trying to get to where we could do a church vote tonight, and there's been publicity of that. But, but that is, the church vote is not happening. We're having to go through some legal things and get legal documents lined up. To We're changing the name from First United Methodist Church to First Methodist Church. And somebody said, hadn't we already voted on that? And yes, we have. We voted to do that. But when you vote to do that, then you have to go through the legal process. And a part of the legal process is to have a church vote with all the legal documents, the articles of incorporation, all these things. And I'm trying to get there, but I missed the document. <laughs> I missed the document, and so we're not ready to vote tonight. So come to the children's program at 6, okay? That's going to be amazing, and we're working, I'm, we're working to see how long it's going to be before we have everything, the legal documents, everything prepared to have that church vote. So did you get that? So don't come for the church vote. Come for the children's program tonight at 6. Thanks be to God. Okay. Uh, Tonight at 6 is the Children's Spring Concert, and, and I just, you, these are so much fun. You really, it's a great way to support our children, to support Meredith and what she does with the kids. Uh, it's a little bit like herding cats, and she does it in an amazing way, and they are really incredible. And so uh, I, I, please come support our children uh, tonight at 6 o'clock. Um, today at 3 o'clock, for anybody that would be interested in helping us with VBS, uh, we really need your help to make that happen. Vacation Bible School is going to be Monday, June the 12th through the 16th. And you can say amen that I didn't say January the 12th, that I actually caught myself and said June the 12th uh, through the 16th. Uh, and that's going to be in the evening. It really takes our whole church to make this happen. There's lots of different roles. There's lots of different things to do. And you could help us out in that if you would come today at 3 to help as we start the planning toward uh, our VBS, and again, really appreciate that. Uh, church camp 
is going to be July the 3rd through the 7th. So yes, it goes right over the 4th of July on that Tuesday. Uh, and uh, so we want to be mindful of that. We are doing registration and we're taking money to get scholarships. It costs $570 a camper. Uh, so wow. And for the counselors, for the counselors and the campers, we think we're going to have 25 to 30 uh, of adults and students going. So uh, we're getting ready for that July the 3rd through the 7th. Okay. So please be mindful of that. Yes. Happy birthday. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. 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 She had a birthday yesterday, so, yeah. So I get to say something today. Yeah. Um, I want to say thank you so much for the support that you gave the kids during the uh, potato supper that they had over there, the tomato. Oh, my God. Potato. Potato lunch. And uh, they cleared uh, over $900. Yes, thank you. And so that's going to go to a to tell William or ask William to put up a slide. We're doing another bingo June the 4th, which is two weeks. Uh, June the 4th, that's, got, that's a Sunday. But if we're not going to be in the church house. We're going to be across the street at the CLC. Thank goodness. 6 o'clock, and it'll be just like, kind of like what we did on our last bingo, $10 for your set of cards. There'll be free popcorn and a drink. We'll have some things to auction off. Uh, the parents are in charge of getting all the prize baskets together, so it's going to be a variety and a smattering of a lot of wonderful things. So just put that on your calendar, please. Sunday, June 4th, and what time did you say? Six. Six. So we, a lot of times that's what we do on our Sunday evening things. And uh, if you were anywhere near that last time, we had a real blast. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and then uh, it did help raise some money. And so it's a fun way to raise money, and we appreciate those that are putting that together. Okay, so so really wonderful. Y'all got that we're not having the church vote tonight, right? So I feel bad if anybody shows up and uh, to to do that. Uh, celebrate recovery this Tuesday is really an awesome ministry. We see God doing good things, and uh, we praise the Lord for that. And uh, it's open to anyone. We're all are recovering and are and from hurts, habits, and hangups. And so it's also a way of going to come help serve the meal and just be there to support that ministry. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, Wednesday morning. I just want to tell you, we have a good group that comes on Wednesday morning for prayer. You know, it's real easy to wring your hands and talk about our country or to talk about this or that. But if you're a person of faith, one of the best things to do is to pray. And so I'd invite you to come join us at 7. We, we're done by 8. Uh, and, and it's a wonderful time to join our faith, our hearts together, praying for our church, too, praying for our country, praying for churches in the area. So I hope that you would please give consideration to come join us for that. Wednesday night, our youth and our children uh, meet over at the CLC. And for our children, they're having a swim party. This is their last meeting uh, they take off during the summer the youth is going to continue to meet during the summer so uh, but this Wednesday is a, an important Wednesday night uh, for especially for the children so be mindful of that handbell choir is at seven and they are doing handbells chancel choir right now is on hold for a little bit but handbells is at seven and that is a, you can connect with that and do that, and they can use your help, and we'd love to have you come join us uh, for that. Wednesday morning, uh, Thursday morning, Pastor's Discipleship Bible Study, and then uh, that's at 10, and then Thursday night is the praise team rehearsal, and we so appreciate these guys and the effort that they put in to lead us in worship, and we're so thankful for that. Amen? You with me? I had to see if I didn't test. Green light came on. That's a good sign. Uh, today's also a really special day when we get to honor two of our graduates. So, Allie and Caden, if y'all would come up, we'd, we'd appreciate that. Come on up. Hey, congratulations, man. Are you counting the days or are you already done? How many, how many days you got? A week. I love, your, uh, I love that, too. Uh, what does Philippians 4.13 say? I can do anything through Christ, through God who strengthens me. Come up here. Yeah. We, 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 and our safety team changed the locks on, on the, well, we did, we, we put, we took the blocks away from the door to the nursery. So she had to attend church a couple of weeks ago because she got locked out and she's so sweet. She wouldn't come in the middle of the service and say, Hey, I need to get my keys out of the nursery. 
but she has been a real godsend to us uh, here at our church with our uh, with our nursery and a, what an incredible blessing and really I know that we consider like man a part of our family of faith I wasn't sure how she viewed it until you know when she was a graduation announcement she came and knew that people cared enough about her you know that she wanted people to know that she was graduating and as she passed those out my heart was warm because you only do that to people you love and care about so that was a really awesome thing so uh, what, what are your plans next fall what are you going to do all things through Christ who strengthens me right don't know yet so we're praying we're praying and that's that's really cool hey on behalf of the congregation uh, I want to present you this don't you like having a book to read for the summer because you didn't know what you were going to do, see? So you, you graduate, and now we know you can read, so we give you something to read. The, this, this is what's most important. This is pretty cool, okay? Uh, this is a devotional book. It's really 40 days, a 40-day devotional book. It's designed to read one devotional a day for 40 days. The words are easy. It's good. You can do it. We cheer you on. And uh, I don't know if there's pictures in there, but you can draw some if you want to. That's what I do with the books. So uh, glory to God. And we, we're excited for you. And, you know, I, I bet you find a way to spend the money. Okay? I bet. But, but one thing that's always interesting, there's a blessing in the book, too. Okay? And I hope that you'll claim that blessing by however you go through it, to go through it. And uh, I also put your check in there. So, like, like this, this is so much money in it. It's heavy, I'm talking about. So, uh, but, but, man, that, that is real. I'm kidding. It's, it's, yeah, it's money. But, yeah. Hey, we love you, sweet girl. We really, really do. What are you going to do in the fall? SFA for business. SFA for business is really awesome. You know, uh, yeah. The, the scary part with SFA is they are now associating with what university? UT. Man, so extra prayer is needed, you know. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't think keep Austin. And weird extends to Nacogdoches, okay? So don't don't think you got to do that. But we're excited for you and excited for business, and we'll see how you invest that money, okay? Sure, you're not going to spend it. You'll you'll invest it because that's business, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, I, I want to just remind you too, hey, that God has a plan, okay? Uh, preachers have their little pet pet little things, you know. And, and one of mine is God has a plan. I think every one of us, I'm going to touch on this in the message. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. It's a powerful thing to know, Luke, God has a plan. Okay? And, and he has a plan. And, and a part of that is knowing the journey, like the, the purpose-driven life. How do I connect to God? How do I connect to that plan? And that is one of our prayers for you guys as you make your journey, that you know that you're seeking that out and trying to live in that. And in that, I want to pray for you today, okay? Lord, I thank you so much for Caden. I love seeing Philippians 4.13 on his arm. And I pray, Lord, that you will guide him into that in the fullness to strengthen him for the things that you lead him to, for the things that you call him to do. And, Lord, I thank you for his life, his personality, for his talents, for who he is. I thank you, Lord, for weaknesses and how you can be glorified even in those. Lord, we thank you so much for sending us Allie. Father God, she came and she met a need here in our congregation. And then in that journey, you have really connected our hearts in a, in a beautiful and special way. And so, Lord, we bless her as she makes this journey for her to know you at ever increasing deeper levels. The plan that you have, Lord, and just provision for SFA and the cost of that education. Uh, and then to find a place spiritually to plug in. And at those years that where you're increasing in knowledge, uh, through college, that then also you can find a way to be strengthened spiritually and in her relationship with you. So, Lord, I bless each one of them today on the journey into your plans and the future that you have for them. In Jesus' holy and powerful name, amen. We love you too. Blessings to you. Amen. Okay. Yes. We have a call to worship that we're going to join together in a call to worship. This uh, ties into God's leading and guidance. We gather today to worship the Lord and to give Him praise. We call upon His name. For the Lord knows us and He loves us. Because Our names are inscribed on the palms of His hands. And we are His. I pray today that you know that you are His 
and that he has plans and purposes for your life, for my life, for each one of us, however young or old. And our deal is to cheer each other on in running the race that God is setting before us and to run it for his kingdom and his glory. Uh, for our, hey, when, Joyce is not here today. Uh, otherwise, that cup would have hit her in the back of the head. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> I, I, want, I want to let you know that Joyce is not here because she is preaching at Men's Chapel today. And uh, man, she's just an awesome woman of faith. And that's a church where she uh, had a season of her life where they loved on her and the pastor was not going to be there. So they called Joyce to come preach for them. I rejoice too because it's a way she knows how to get there. Uh, they, they sometimes call her to go to churches that we have to look up and a lot of times she'll drive on Saturday to make sure she knows how to get there. But this one we know she knows how. So today we lift up Joyce. You know, uh, I also want you to know, especially some of the women, her daughter, Rebecca, with the cancer that she's going through. And Rebecca, if you're watching, because I, I, I know Mims Chapel, I don't think they stream. So Rebecca, if you're watching, we're really praying for you. She's going through some cancer. If you do Facebook, you should be able to track Rebecca down. And I would just love if you would just send her like, you know, a little message. Hey, Rebecca, we're praying for you because for her, she really, this is her family of faith. She can't be here, but she's connected to us and to our body. And she is going through a hard treatment with this cancer and a lot of things. And I would love for her to feel the support of the church just through a message now and then. And so that's Rebecca. And that is uh, Joyce's daughter, and she watches most every Sunday and sends little updates and stuff. And, and it's really an intense treatment she's going through. So we're praying uh, for Rebecca today. We're praying for Joyce and celebrating. She's going to be 90 uh, this year, and yet her heart is to be used by God. That's what she wants to do, is to be used by God. And so at 89 years old, she's driving out to go preach the Word today. So isn't that a glorious thing? Amen. And so uh, I'm going to lead us in prayer, and, uh, and then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let, let's pray together. Lord, today I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you for each person here today, for those watching online. Lord, I know I desire to encounter your presence, not just to understand your principles. I want to understand your principles, but I also want to encounter your presence. You are always good. But I have not always allowed the revelation of your goodness to draw me to you. Lord, cleanse and purify our hearts today to run after you with reckless abandon. I pray this especially for our graduates, Lord, that, that as they commence from high school and go forward, that they would seek you and that they would run after you with reckless abandon. Lord, help me to see your encounters with people in the scriptures, in history, and even around me as a revelation of what is available to us. Lord, we desire to behold you more fully. Remove the veil of unbelief from our hearts. Let your light shine on our hearts so that we can know the glory, your glory, in the face of Christ. We desire to know the one in whose image we are made. Help to create within us uh, a desire and a hunger. Help us to cease attempting to find our identity in our performance or trying to be good enough. But Lord, let us find our image revealed in your countenance, in your face. Let us not be satisfied by a partial transformation into your image. I desire to become a mature manifestation of Christ on the earth as a fully devoted disciple of Jesus. Captivate my heart with who you are. Let us see your true worthiness so that the value of anything that, that, that we must surrender in order to know you deeper would be revealed and there would be nothing we would hold on to that would keep us from you. Cleanse our hearts. Lead us by your Holy Spirit. Give us the wisdom and grace to recognize and even to resist the distractions and deceptions that would stifle our hearts in our pursuit of you. Lead us by your Holy Spirit. Encounter us today, we pray in Jesus' holy and powerful name. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's stand and worship the Lord today.
yesterday. And there was Milton's casket with his earthly tent. But the reality is that he has eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so he's not sitting in the pew where he usually sits. He's with the Lord forever. And what a powerful thing. Everything we do is by faith. And we can sing these words. But there's a scripture says, For when this earthly tent is destroyed, we have a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Psalm 23, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of the life, all the days of my life, but I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so I pray that we just live in what we think. To put our faith in Jesus and we're forever God's. Whether I live, whether I die, I am the Lord's. And that we have that place of surrender. It changes how we live every day. It impacts it.
for how you love us. Thank you, Lord, for the cross of Jesus Christ. We come to that cross, Lord, and we surrender before you, Father God. We owe all to you. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Lord of God. Uh, I would have you know that we don't pass an offering plate, but we have a basket at the back. If you'd like to give of your tithes and offerings to the Lord, uh, just be reminded that, you know, young people in the scholarship from the church there that's in that, that's from this body, and they love you. And through your offering, we're able to give a, a, a scholarship to each one of them. This past week, I had to order some more Bibles. Uh, I'm trying to get in the youth on Wednesday night, all of us reading from the same version uh, and helping them look it up. And we had enough. I had to order some more Bibles. And your offering help get, helps get those Bibles. And so many ways that, that uh, your offerings support the cause of Christ and the ministry in this church. And uh, so thankful for that and uh, appreciate your faithfulness. And then I appreciate God's faithful to us. You can give online uh, several ways to do that. So um, appreciate you for your faithfulness and just thankful for the way that God provides to us. Uh, amen. Amen. Yes, very, very much so. Oh, man, I pray for the message today. So help us, Jesus, okay? We're going to try to layer about three things, okay? We're going to try to layer about three things as we walk through some scriptures together and, and like a common thread that runs through all of it and then kind of explaining that better at the end, but then hitting some points in each of these passages of scripture uh, and in these stories and uh, so, God help us. Amen. <laughs> I'm, that was weak. God help us. Amen. amen. And I'm really like saying God help me, but you have to be trying to figure out what I'm saying. So help us. All right. Uh, a passage of scripture that I really love is John chapter 10, verse 27. Now, I also like John 10, 10, John 10, 10 says, for the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And man, that is a verse, whether we realize it or not, we live in every day. We're in a spiritual battle, the thief trying to steal, kill and destroy. And then for us, understanding what is the abundant life that Jesus wants us to have? It's not about material possessions. It's about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, eternal salvation, life in God, the abundant life that he wants us to have. But flowing into that abundant life that he wants us to have, this captures a, a part of that new life, that abundant life that, that Jesus wants to lead us into. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Uh, one of the things when I'm working with young people, you have to hope that young people know that God is real. We live in a world that doesn't pay much attention to God. It's like an afterthought. And yet here I want to live my life like God is the most important thing. He is the only thing. He's what matters. And then you're living in a world that doesn't even give God a thought. And so you're trying with the young people to help them know, you know, that God is real and that he loves them and what he's done for them in Jesus Christ and that he has a plan for their life. And then if they start realizing he has a plan for their life, how do they begin to discover to walk in that plan? I hope you followed all of that. Because where we're jumping to today is to talk about that God has a plan for each one of our lives. And he wants us to know what that plan is and how to walk in that. And one of the key things he's given us is the word of God. How do we lay hold the word of God? Study. Study. Read. Reading. Hear. Hearing. That's what you're doing today. Meditating, Meditating and memorizing. And so that's how we lay hold of the Word of God, and that's one of the ways that we learn God's will. But fortunately, we don't just have a relationship with the book. We have a relationship with the God who wrote the book, who's behind the book, who in, makes it living and active, and, and then He can speak to us His will. Now, I say He can speak to us. I so remember being a youth pastor leading a group that was really seeking the Lord and we were invited to go speak to another youth group and I asked our kids what do we want to speak on and they said we want to, I want us the weekend to be over uh, hearing God's voice. And so that first Friday night, we went in with the youth, and I was speaking about that we can hear God's voice, you know, this verse right here. And one of the young men of that youth group, as he was walking out, he no doubt said this to his friend for my benefit. Okay, he said to me, whenever, one, whenever anybody tells me they hear from God, I know they're either lying or crazy.
Hey, I'm I'm switching to this other. Doing the funeral added took life out of that battery. So usually it goes so many weeks. We lost it yesterday. So okay. Um, see, he said, I know that they're either crazy or lying. And you, I believe that that that's a little bit out in the world today. And sometimes even within the church, that if you start thinking about, oh, you know, God told me or, you know, I heard the Lord, people start like taking a step back. Like, OK, <laughs> you know, whatever, dude, you know, like, uh, but 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 like I'm wanting to tell you, the scripture says the sheep, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. and They follow me. We read in Scripture people that encounter God, okay? And so often we read that and it's some mysterious thing of a day gone by, and yet, does God still speak? Charlie, you want to mess with you just a minute? Because Bible study on, on uh, Thursday, you've been here long enough now I can pick on you. And Mike really rejoices because normally I pick on Mike. So he's really glad that you're here, okay? So, uh, Charlie, Wednesday you were talking about a, a moment that transformed your life. Just the brief little hit of that moment. What happened? Back seat. What happened? God spoke to me. From the back seat of your car. Correct. Right. You know, you're either crazy or lying, bro. It was transformative in your life, wasn't it? 1986. 1986. Okay. I've shared with you before a friend of mine, Shane Ford, and how he sat down in a chair after a day's work, and out of the, out of the laundry room, a voice said, uh, you need to get your family to church. And he had three triplet daughters that were 13 years old. And off of that, they started going to church. That's how he and I connected. And he is an amazing brother in the Lord watching his journey in Christ. But it all started there. I, I'm, I want to tell you, I'm going to read some biblical stories because we want to be in the Bible, right? And were you with me, right? The Bible counts. But what I'm also want to tell you that, man, this is real in the world today. And, and the Lord wants you to know His heart. He wants you to know His will. He wants you to know the plans He has for your life. And first of all, it starts in the Word of God. That's how we show Him we're serious, is laying hold of the Word of God. But as He leads us in that, things, other things happen. Okay. Two weeks ago, we talked about the road to Emmaus and how Jesus revealed Himself to the two men on the road to Emmaus. And that happened as He broke bread with them. Uh, they recognized Jesus for who He was. Last week we talked about Mary as she went to the tomb. And what was the moment for her when she recognized who Jesus was? He said her name, Mary. And, and all of a sudden she, when he called her name, she knew it was Jesus. And she turned to him, Rabboni, teacher. In the early church, there was this guy named Saul. And man, Saul was for the law. He was for the Old Testament Jewish law. And he didn't know what this Christian thing was, but he knew it needed to be extinguished. And so he set himself against this early growing faith. And he was dragging people off to prison. He stood and watched Stephen be stoned to death. And so he goes and he gets some orders that he can go to Damascus. He's heard there's some believers in Damascus. And so he gets the papers that he needs that he can go, up, go over to Damascus and round up, find the church, however they're meeting. And he's going to round them up and he's going to have them in jail. No, maybe, what, who knows what his plan is for what he's going to do with those believers. So Saul is headed to Damascus and he is looking forward to... Kicking some rear end when he gets there. And, and now look, read in Acts 9, Acts 9, 1 through 9. Then Saul, breathe, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. Then he asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You know, he might say to us, call your name and say, why are you neglecting me? 
Why are you not loving me? Why are you not worshiping me? Why are you not serving me? But to Saul, he said, why are you persecuting me? And Saul, from the ground, looked up and said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. What was the first thing Saul heard Jesus say? His name. And one of the things that underlying current too, that we're stacking things, one of those underlying currents is that God knows your name. He knows your story. He knows your name. He knows your story. He knew Saul and he called Saul by name. Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Here's a great line for you. And it's hard for you to kick against the goads. Well, stay there. Stay there. Don't go. Stay there. So then keep seeing this. Go, go back. It's hard for you to kick. What the heck is a goad? Okay. Sheep were a big part of their economy. And a goad is one of two things. It's a stick that they stick the sheep with to kind of herd them along. And then as they get them closer to the pen, they put up these little pointy sticks. So the sheep don't like bumping into them. So they're pointy sticks. The sheep don't like bump, bumping into them. So they stay to go into the pen as they're getting herded in. So the key thing is it's a pointy thing. So, so how's it going to go for you to stand there kicking against a pointy thing? Hello, church? Not well. You know, you got bloody shins and you're still kicking. Hello? So, so along the way, so along the way in this sermon, I'm going to make some, some underpoints along the way with the big thing of hearing God and knowing His will. But along the way, I, I want you to ask yourself today, are there areas in your life where you're kicking against the goads? Here's what's, here's what's sad. is when you preach on stuff, you open yourself up for God to teach you. And so, like, I'd love to say as the pastor, oh, I'm above all of that. But I spent Thursday and Friday kicking against the goats. <laughs> Bloody spiritual shins, the so show for it. And, and fortunately, because I'm preaching on it, I'm like, dude, that's kicking against the goats. That's, stu that's stupid. God has something he's shown me, something he wants me to walk in, something he wants me to do. I'm resisting it. And then resisting it, and sometimes you start trying to, hey God, plan B. Plan B could be really cool. You know, like I really like plan B. I like plan B a lot better than I like your plan A. And so you're trying to get God over your plan B, and what you're doing is you're kicking against the goats. I mean, sometimes God will listen. He'll negotiate with you. He will. But sometimes he's made his will clear, and he's like, no, that ain't it. We're not on plan B. It's plan A. You know it's plan A, so quit kicking against the goats. So for some of you, it still doesn't make sense, like when I apply it to your life. But for some others of you, the Holy Spirit is in it, and He may be showing you where you're kicking against the goats. Are you with me, church? Because there's a lot of Christians spend a good bit of time kicking against the goats. And Paul wasn't a Christian yet, but he was kicking against the goats. God was already stirring things in his heart. He was already revealing things to Paul. And Paul was bucking up against it and fighting against it until God just knocked him off the horse. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Man, there's a surrender. Would you, there's a couple of things I'm going to ask you if you would pray today. I don't, I don't see many taking notes today, and God bless you on that. You know, you should come to Bible study on Thursday, and you'll get challenged. So, uh, but, 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 you know, like, what do you want me to do? And that's another thing to ask the Lord, to pray to the Lord. What do you want me to do? That's an awesome place to surrender. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul rose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. I'm doing you a little bit of a disservice today, and I need you to bear with me, because I love Ananias. I love the story of Ananias. God spoke to Ananias. God spoke to Ananias and said, hey, you know that Saul, the one that's persecuting all the Christians, rounding them all up? I want you to go meet with him. 
Well, that sounds like a plan, doesn't it? <laughs> and lo and behold, and Ananias, hearing God's direction for his life, he goes to the place where he knows Saul, this guy that's coming to round up the Christians, to bind them and carry them back to Jerusalem. God calls Ananias to go to Saul. And Ananias, in obedience to the Lord, goes to Saul, prays for him. Saul's eyes are open. Now what's going to happen? And Saul becomes Paul and begins to preach the gospel. And we have 27 books in the New Testament, and Paul wrote 13 of them. That's what God can do. Hello. You have no idea what God may be calling you for, preparing you for, and He's calling your name. He's speaking. He has a plan. Our two young people, seniors, you know, I like graduation, but I also like that word commencement. Because commitment, commencement means going forward and you going forward in the plans and the purposes of God for your life. I pray that for you. Okay? Uh, so, Saul, God calls his name. And one of the challenges to us are there are areas in our lives where God is speaking and we're kicking against the goads. And then to know that, that God has a plan. He had a plan for Paul. He had a plan for Ananias. Now we're going to go into 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 1 through 11. 1 Samuel 3, 1 through 11. Now the boy Samuel, who is a son of promise to Hannah, and she came and dedicated Samuel to the Lord, and Samuel ministered to Eli, sorry, sorry, Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Where is Samuel when this story starts? It, I know it's a little bit tricky, so we can figure it out. It's not real clear, but kind of. Where is Samuel when this story starts? He's in the temple. He's ministering with Eli, who's the high priest, and he's, he's in the temple. Today, we might say he's in church. Okay? So Sam, the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Now listen to this. This is another one of those underlying points kind of on level two. Okay? And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Does that sound like today? Huh? To me, that sounds like today. The word of the Lord is rare. There was no widespread revelation. You try to teach it to a young person, and a young person looks at you and says, Man, anybody tries to tell me they heard from God, I know they're either crazy or lying. Why would they say that? Because the word of the Lord is rare. And so we can talk about our world today. We can worry about our country. But God is calling us to rise up, to press into Him. He's the God that has the plan. He knows what He wants to do. And a part of the reason the church is not being effective in having its salt and light witness in the world is we don't know how to press in to know His individual, personal will for us and the difference that He's calling us to make. There's a place where Jesus would say, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And that's what I'm saying today. That's back on level one. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And, and to learn from this. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was laying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow dim, so that he could not see. So if you have to get your readers you know, to read anything... You can identify with Eli here, okay, whether you like it or not. I say that because i got readers all over my house, okay. Uh, and before the lamp of the Lord went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, while Samuel was laying down, the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, here I am. But he didn't even know it was the Lord. He ran to Eli and he said, here I am, for you called me. He's in the house of God and he doesn't recognize God's voice. He thinks it's Eli. And Eli said, I didn't call you, son. Lie down again. Get out of, you know, I mean, don't mess with the old man's sleep. You know, I, I, I need my sleep, you know, because my eyes are getting dim and I like sleeping. I'm just saying that because I can relate to that. So here we go. Uh, so Samuel did not yet know the Lord. I, my heart aches because I feel like in the church today, there's people that, that don't know how God speaks. They don't know that voice of God, and, and, and we need to know it. He did not know the Lord, nor was the, Lord of, was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Wow. 
And so the Lord called Samuel again. Yet again, Samuel. What, 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 what's, what's one of the words that God says to him? What's he saying to him right now? What's he saying? His name. I know you. I know your name, Samuel. He called to him yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. That's where it says Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Sorry, I got a little ahead. Because this, happen this happens four times. Okay? So here's the third time. So the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you did not... For, for you did call me. Finally, the third time, Eli, the man of God, the priest you know, of Israel, all of a sudden now he realizes, he perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Now, there's another uh, version of this that says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Say that with me, that version. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. There's things I'm encouraging you that if this message touches your heart, there's some key points that I'm giving to you to take with you through the week. And one of those would be that prayer to say to the Lord, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God loves that. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So the boy same. So so then the Lord said, said that, and then the Lord said to Samuel, when he came to him, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And he gave him a prophetic word after that. And sometimes we need those prophetic words. That's how we cooperate with God and and connect with Him. So the two things out of this passage of Scripture that I'm wanting us to pack in our bag, you know, for our little journey here this morning, is the Word of the Lord was rare in those days. And I'm saying that's how I feel it is for our day, and I want to do my part to be a disciple who helps make disciples who know that Jesus is speaking and that we can hear His voice, and that's a key part of how we follow Him today. Whew. Are you with me, church? It's not just to nod whether you're like, I have no idea what he's saying. Well, yeah, Pastor, we're with you. Glory to God. All right. Okay. But help us, Jesus, man. I always uh, you know, pray for us to have ears to hear and that God will anoint my speaking. He'll anoint your hearing uh, and, and that, that we would hear uh, and give us ears to hear. Now we're going to go into Exodus uh, chapter 1 and chapter 3, sorry, Exodus 3. And we're just going to read 3 and 4. This does, we miss in 1 and 2 that Moses is out keeping the sheep. He's doing what he normally does. And he sees this bush. And out, out when you're, they're tending the sheep in the area where he was at, it was not uncommon for bushes just to catch on fire. Through the heat or for whatever reasons, bushes would catch on fire. And he saw this bush that was on fire. There was nothing necessarily unusual with that. But as he looked closer, he realized that it was still green. Usually why they would catch on fire is because they were brown and dry and something would happen, just the heat or whatever, and it would catch on fire and it would be consumed. But this bush was burning and it was not consumed. So he saw something unusual. And in verse 3 it says, Then Moses said, so he said to himself, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. You remember I said the word of the Lord was rare in those days, right? You want to know why one of the reasons why today the word Lord is rare is because people aren't turning aside and taking the time to learn how to listen with their spiritual ears. We live in a loud world that is constantly upon us a million different ways. Oh man, my phone, my phone, my phone ding the other day. Oh man, I got a ding, I gotta check my phone. Duolingo. Oh, you had to practice today. Oh, I'm glad. I needed to know that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Right now, my phone dings in my pocket. Oh, weekly report available. You averaged six hours and 40 minutes of screen time every day last week. You might want to pray for your pastor. <laughs> Holy smokes. Hello? 
I turned into my own example, like in the middle of the message. <laughs> Help him, Jesus. Thank you, brother. He's new here and he knew to say that. Come on. Man, I mean, that the world is upon us. Our phone just dings. It goes off. And, and everything is trying to get our attention. And our attention has worth and value in the world. That's why they're dinging. That's why they want us to go to their site. That's why they want us to do our thing. Our phones are listening when we aren't. Our phones are listening when we don't even know. I was telling the story yesterday that one day Debbie and I were in our breakfast area. It was at our other house. And in that breakfast area, and Debbie said, I don't know why that makes you so angry. And she asked me that a lot, so that she pray for that too. She said, I don't know why that made you so angry. And then we stepped outside, we sat on the back porch to calm down, and we we're watching birds. And I said, Man, so many pretty birds in our backyard. All of a sudden, my phone ding, and of course, it can't ding without me checking it. And it says, Angry birds. <laughs> Dude, I've never played Angry Birds in my life. I mean, I kind of know what it is. But, but, you know, and, and now, like, just think of all of this. This is the world. Our phones are listening all the time, and they'll ding us with stupid stuff like Angry Birds. And then so we don't turn aside. We don't even know how to listen to the Lord because we live in this loud, dinging, get our attention world all the time. And so we don't turn aside, and then we never hear the voice of God. Hello? But Moses saw something unusual, so he turned aside. And that's one of the biggest things. God is calling you and me in these days to take some time to turn aside so that he can speak and so that we can hear and so that we can know his will at deeper degrees. So when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush. And he said, what did he say? His name. Moses, Moses, God knows your name. He knows your heart. He knows your story. God has a plan. And you know, it's one thing for me to think God has a plan for me, but let me tell you, a part of my plan is being your pastor, and you have to suffer through that. I would hope maybe you get blessed by that. I don't know. Mike, it's questionable day by day, isn't it, uh, brother? Yeah. All right. Uh, Mike's wearing a shirt the other day, and I said, man, you need to carry that shirt to faith in action. My, his shirt, I can tell it's one of his favorite ones, but he doesn't know I like people to carry their shirts to faith in action so I can get them and I can wear them. <laughs> and I had to explain that to him because he didn't want to hurt his feelings because he was like, I like this shirt. So he wears shirts all the time that he needs to carry to faith in action. So, uh, yeah. So, 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 you know, like you have to suffer through that, okay? But, but a part of God's plan for me is he called me here to be your pastor and, 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 that, and knowing that. But then... A part of why he called me here to be your pastor is because this is one of the things of my life. This is a message of my life. And I know how God works because Moses then said, here I am. And what did God call Moses to do at the burning bush? What did he call him to do? Free his people. Set my people free. And he and Moses sat there and had a dialogue as Moses offered excuse after excuse why he was not the one. And God just kept meeting him point by point by point. And they had a conversation. And Moses got to the place that he and the Lord met together face to face, even to the point that Moses' face would shine and the people would say, you need to put on a veil because your face is shining. But do you think the people in bondage in Egypt were kind of glad that Moses turned aside? Hello? Yeah. Because he went to set them free. There's people that are needing you to do God's will, to know God's will, to be who God's calling you to be. And that if you're not being who God is calling you to be, he's either having to get somebody else or people are suffering or struggling who you might be the one to be there to help and to be there for them. And so... We're going to come back to point A is Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. We've had don't kick against the goads. We've had the word of the Lord was rare in those days. But in that speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. We've got right here that he that he turned aside. We've got down that lower level theme of that. God knows your name. He knows your story. God has a plan. So all these things layer together. But now we come back to John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. What is our mission statement here at First Methodist Gladewater? 
Heart, no, hey, no, no, don't put it, don't let them cheat. No, no, that's not good. <laughs> Holy smokes. Um, now you have no idea. Just, you know, like, on, on, uh, I was trying to think of the movie where they had that little zapper thing where they could zap them and they wouldn't remember anything. So, uh, Men in Black, yeah. So you didn't see that, see? Uh, so, so what's our mission statement? Partnering with God and transforming people into fully devoted disciples of Jesus for the glory of God. Transforming. I hope we're being transformed. I'm being transformed. I'm trying in my life, and that's a part of being a disciple. But also learning what it means to be a fully devoted disciple, disciple so that then we can be a part of making fully devoted disciples. And the disciples follow Jesus, right? And that's, disciple means learner. That's what it means. And if we're going to be a disciple of Jesus, we're going to learn from him, but we're also going to follow him. What does John 10 say that we need so that we can follow him? What? And then like, see, see like, <laughs> uh, she disappointed it's a two. Uh, I was with my grandkids last night, did a devotional with them, and they didn't get all the answers, so I got two dollars <laughs> left. So, uh, <coughs> but but so uh, but but so like hear his voice to know to know his will. You know, to be a disciple, we have to hear his voice, ears to hear, so that we can follow him. And let me tell you, church man, God is working here at First Methodist Gladewater. There's a stirring. Where's my man? There's a stirring. Am I right? Man, I haven't picked on you in a long time. You know, like, holy smokes. i got to think of that next week. I'll come up with something. But uh, I, I, I think he moved way over there because he knows I can't see him. And if he's right there, I get him. So uh, to, to know that, that, that God is with us, that we can follow him and be disciples who make disciples. I'm so thankful to God to be here. God is stirring. That's where he and I just talking about. We can feel God stirring. Because he wants us to be salt and light in glade water and in our community and our world individually and corporately. God is stirring. Amen? Amen. <sighs> I got to do this again at 11. So hello, praise God, uh, help him Jesus. Uh, because because this, one, this one is, I guess you can see, this one is in me. This one is on me. This is where I live. I do discipleship with guys. Uh, and, and us trying to grow together in the Lord. Yesterday morning in that busy day at 7.30, I got to Zoom with one of my brothers in Dallas and one of my brothers in Kenya, Africa, and pray for each other. And, and, and man, they're just two guys that seek the Lord and iron sharpen and iron and so thankful share the people that God brings to share the journey with. Austin and Avery, just so thankful for the people God brings to us to share that journey with. Mike, we, the verdict's still out on you, but Lord, we're really glad that you're here. Uh, glory to God, uh, and, and thankful. God is working. Rick, so thankful that God brought you and Rhonda to us and share that journey and know her eternal glory. You know, man, oh man, love you and appreciate your work. If you get to see the sidewalks out there, how clean they are, Rick almost died one of the days this week doing that, so uh, thank you for that work. Hear the word of the Lord. Give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see. Give us hearts to go after God with everything we got. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for each person here that you know our name, that you have a plan, and that you want us to be fully devoted disciples of Jesus. Uh, lead us by your Holy Spirit. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Give us ears to hear. Help us to turn aside, to make time. Help us to go after you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Let's stand and sing to the glory of God today.
us today, fighting a battle that, that he's already won. Before we close, and I know we always press it to the last moment, but before we close, I didn't know if there's anybody that might want to unite, join the church today. I want to give that opportunity. If there are, you just raise your hand and we'll figure that out. Lord, are you with him? You in? All right. Hey, are y'all both baptized believers in our Lord Jesus Christ? I suspect you are, and we give thanks to God for that. Mike has been in ministry a good number of years, and so it's really awesome for God to lead them here to us. So know that you're baptized believers. So what we ask is, will you support the cause of Christ here at First Methodist Church through your prayers, your presence, being here, your gifts, your service, and your witness of how you live every day? We support the cause of Christ here in those five things. Then we welcome you as members. You know, membership... You're a part of our family of faith. You don't have to like be a member to be a part of our family of faith. But it is a blessing when you show us you like us enough that you would join. That, that's really cool too. Uh, and we love you guys and love cutting up and joke, joking with you because I know you can take it and I get it back. Rick, yes sir. Uh, there's some Dunkin' Donut coffee back there that I accidentally bought. It's uh, blueberry muffin. So I, thought, I thought it was blueberry muffins that I was going to mix for vacation Bible school. And then I took it home and read it in this coffee. Anybody that wants it, you're welcome to it. And, and uh, th this is what happens after your wife dies and you're on your own, okay? So I'm just saying. I mean, man, Rhonda is chuckling up in heaven today, looking down. She is laughing. <laughs> Blueberry coffee or muffin coffee or something that Rick purchased by accident that he's sharing today. And then uh, Mike and Laura, we, we welcome you. We're, we love you guys and trust in God for what he's got. Yes, good. Glory to God. We do this, and men, this means so much to me, even just with my grandchildren last night, some things that we were doing and talking about this. But you know that I can just see Milton's casket here yesterday morning, you know, and he's not there. And he's up in heaven, and he's saying this with us today <laughs> from a whole different perspective. Rhonda's with him, you know, others that have gone before us in the faith. Praise be to God. This, this goes a lot of ways. Who are we? We are Christ's family. And we've come to worship the Lord and to give him praise. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, be blessed as you go today. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm